I'm gonna start off today by misting the canvas, mostly the top there. With a little bit of water, might as well mist my paint so they don't dry out. I'll be doing that quite a lot through the painting. Let's get our little flat brush and put it in some water just so that it doesn't suck up all the moisture from the paint, then, you know, it doesn't spread very far. I'm gonna do a, a beautiful little sunset here. And so to do that, I'm gonna start off with my yellows and white, my cad yellow, my yellow ochre and white. And let's just begin right down here, kinda, right there. All right, right there, that'll work. A little red in this. Okay, there it is, right there, I found it. I like that, and that'll work. Nice bright orange colors. So you got maybe a little more peach going. You can you can layer this up. You may need to do a couple of coats just to get it built up thick enough, especially if you're not adding a lot of white. If you add too much white, it'll look too chalky. So, you know, you'll, you'll sort of feel it out as you go. You'll, you'll get a feel for it. You don't want to have too many brush marks in the painting. So several layers will help with that. We're also gonna do water. It wouldn't hurt to go ahead and begin to just get the color of the water started. This is just the basic color. I am gonna have a lot of ripples and beautiful things going on in the water. So again, just the color, just the basic color of the water. All right, now before we go too far, let's take a look at the paintings that you guys did of my last one. And if you'd like to have your painting featured here in the next video, do your version of what I'm doing right now and share it with me. And then if I see it in time, I will for sure get it in the next video. Now I'm gonna get some blue, white, just a little red, not too much of the red. It's mostly blue and white. I'm gonna need some more white here soon. And this is already dry back here. I'm gonna just mist a little water right on the top part of the canvas just to keep it wet and, and easy to work with and not, otherwise, you know, you just get your, your brush up here and it just sort of stops you. Oh, it just immediately doesn't blend. So I'm just gonna quickly place in, and I'm not really who concerned about the transition? Most of it is covered by clouds, so I'm not gonna work myself, you know, in circles trying to get this just perfectly smooth or anything along those lines. Just quick, basic blue top to the sky. Now the sky is dry. I'm going to begin to work in my clouds. This is my tapered round brush, which is of course my favorite brush for acrylic clouds. Actually, just probably my favorite brush in the acrylic line. But I'm, because this is dry, I can float my color over here without mixing mud. I'm gonna do a very distinct sun right about here. And I'm gonna have those little trees along the river bank. Now I know this, this is fairly rough. You know, there's not, it's not very refined yet. That's because we have such a big cloud area. It's just not necessary. To, uh, to get all of that covered perfectly. So it's just ma basically a mass of color. Um, this needs to be a little darker right here. Let me mix up a little more paint. A little bit more of my just a basic purple. That's all I'm using here is a basic purple. We go a little darker so that it shows. It's okay to have the edges kind of a little darker, maybe a little lighter here, and, and maybe even a little lighter as we go down into the middle. Oh, there's some accidental blue. I'm just not over mixing my paint. Okay, let's see that. It's very important to get these soft edges as you do the clouds. You can always come back and add more uh, sharpness or more defined details if you need to. But it's a little more, I was gonna say very, it's not that challenging, but it's just slightly more challenging to go back and try to soften edges because that could take several coats of paint in order to get it thick enough where it covers up those old hard edges. So anyway, my advice is just use this brush on, on a slant, not straight in, but on a slant, and just get you those soft edges. This is a dry brush blending technique. Wet acrylic paint over a dry acrylic background. Well, now I'm gonna go ahead and just work on my little sun area. Begin to brighten it, not only that, but to begin to fuzzy out, and yes, that is a proper art term, fuzzy out my edges continually misting my paint because otherwise it just dries right out. You'll have to just get some more. 
There, see, I'm brightening this up little by little, layer by layer. I've got kind of that neat little cloud there, kind of little cloud here. It's not totally just like a big circle in the sky where my opening is. It's got something, it's got some interest to it and a little movement about it, and that's nice. Right up in here, a lot of gold, a lot of yellow. Even more of my yellow ochre there. As I just begin working into some of these these clouds going this way. Build this up until it's extremely bright. The brightest area is going to be the sun, which is going to be a full circle just burning through the clouds with a soft edge. And so I just work that around, dry brush blending. Just work it around. And some of that will be, see, it's just not as, it's not as bright as it's going to be. <laughs> layer upon layer, working it up and then bring in some of that in through here. Now I'm waiting for this to dry because I'm going to go back and still do a couple more coats. But while I'm waiting for it to dry, I thought it'd be worthwhile to go ahead and begin working out my silver lining here, which is basically a white a little tinge of our yellow ochre really in it, but not much. And I'm just going to work in small sections and then come back and you can just kind of blend it away. This is water-based acrylics. I've got no trouble just blending it with my finger. If you'd rather get in there and blend it with a, with a little clean brush, that would be okay too. I don't think it really makes a whole lot of difference, but I like the way that this is really gonna make this whole area stand out, pop, you know? They're nice and bright, and this may take a couple of coats. Also, it just kind of depends. Nice go maybe one or two inch sections at a time, and then you need to at least blend it and feather it just a little so you don't have those hard lines in there. And then you know all of this through here, it's kind of hard to tell what's going on until we do this outline, try to figure out just exactly how these clouds are sitting in here and what's going on. See that? Now I'm just gonna brush in, this paint's fairly thin, just brush in some wispy clouds, some of this highlight up on the edge of the clouds. Get that in. That's pretty good right there, just little by little. There's my color. It's mostly white, just a little tiniest touch of red in it. And that will work. See that? Get, get these nice little wispy highlights. You can actually soften just by kind of going around the edge of some of it. If it looks a little harsh, you know, just hit it and then it'll soften it just a little. You can do that just here and there. It doesn't need to be everywhere. I like that one's harsh, so look at this. And then once that kind of dries out and it'll dry out more transparent, it won't be so harsh that way. Just continue to see that's already drying out a bit more subtle, so I go back over it with another layer rather than glopping it on thick to begin with, because if I glop it on too thick, it will, it'll be just too, it'll be too rough and it won't look smooth and it'll be hard to make it look smooth. So go little by little here. Now I have a gray purple. What I did was I took just a little tiniest bit of umber and added to the same purple we've been using in this whole thing. And what I'm gonna do with this is just add the dark centers to the cloud. And it's, it's very important that this stays misted because I need that paint kind of transparent so that I don't just lose everything that I have all the subtleties that I've built in here. There we go, that's just enough right there. Oh yeah, that, see that shadow coming across that? That's supposed to look to me like one cloud coming through this area right here. And then it kind of transitions into other little clouds up in this area, but I like this idea. A lot of this is here gonna be covered. Little by little because the sky is critical. It's like the only feature of the painting today. That, and I mean, some on the water, but the water's not really as important. I'm gonna, whatever I do, I've, I've been just, I don't think I've really mentioned that. Whatever I've done up here, I've just sprinkled it down in the water, just so that the water at least has the same colors. That's all I care about. Now I've got a kind of a dark, very dark green color mixed up. Really, I've got all my colors in there except yellow and white. Okay, lots of color. I don't want just one dead flat color. And, you know what, let's not, let's not underdo the red. Let's, let's a little extra red in there. Okay, <laughs> finally, 
I get to take a break from that sky. Pretty well close to done. We may, we may add a couple more coats of glazing to soften some of these areas that are still a little harsh, but overall, it's close. Let's go ahead and let's work on this just distant river bank back here with the trees. That's just gonna go in. This is gonna definitely take a couple coats. This is gonna go in pretty dark, very dark. There's no highlight on this. It's just silhouetted, so make it as dark as you can. I do like seeing color in it. That's why it's not pure black. To grab a little number six flat brush, I just put a little water in it and maybe grab a little of this color just while it's, since I got a wet, well, let's not do that. I have too much paint in the brush. A wet edge. I can actually take that wet edge and just feather it down to at least so that I've got um, the beginning stages of a reflection. This is not a final reflection. It certainly needs to be darker than that, but it, it prevents me from having just a, just a, a sharp edge to deal with later. Now I'm just gonna mist only the bottom. See how I angle my mist down? Because I don't wanna get it everywhere. And with that, I'm going to begin to pull in these, these little ripple lines in the water. This water's moving. We're going to see some ripples. At first, you know, they'll be kind of large. And then they, they'll be smaller as they go back. They also, they'll also flatten out as they go back too. See this? Look at this. There we go. By spraying the water on it, you'll see that I'm getting that that, that effect, not too much paint, but that, that effect of it just smoothing in, it just like a watercolor just kind of fades, it, it diffuses. That's what I want. Now these are our dark. Let me go back over these. I don't know, do you, do you like the dark ones? Or do you think maybe that's too dark? I don't know. Don't for sure know just yet. I can always lighten those if I want to. I'm gonna darken. I think the contrast is nice. See that, I'm gonna darken these. Beautiful. Okay, and then continue to go over my, even my little shadow reflection ripple things here. And just work this here and there so you get kind of an effect that you like. This is gonna be a shadow of another tree and limbs and stuff here from a limb that's gonna be over here in the water. That's why it helps to pre-plan your painting. Now, as that's drying, I'm going to go ahead and get my, my tree here that grows in from the side into the painting. This definitely needs some more work. That is just a, just the first coat. And we're going to have to, you know, wait till it totally dries and bring in some more, just some more refinement. Highlight here, shadow there. It's amazing what just a, a shadow and a highlight can do for you. Let's see, I'm just going to use these stippled effects here to get this beautiful, high contrast silhouetted tree. That's good. Yeah, it's pretty straightforward actually. I'll just work on this a few more minutes. Hope you didn't spend too much time on your clouds over here. Well, it's a little bit, a little bit of them show through, but not much, not much. This is almost totally black here. I'm not really worried too much about getting a lot of different colors in this. And then it actually comes down pretty far into the painting. Now that of course is wet still, so that'll need to be gone back over again when that dries. <laughs> That's okay. All that filled in. And then I've got this branch that sticks out here in the, almost out here across the sky. Make sure that's good there. I'm just gonna go ahead and put this branch in right here. Okay, kind of leafy. Not too, not too clumped, like full, it's kind of open and leafy. We'll pull the branch through there and make it look good. You know, make it look natural by connecting it. That's, that's pretty good, that's really probably more than enough right there. Now I'm gonna, do really the most interesting part of this whole painting, which is my sun rays, which are coming right off of that beautiful bright sun area all the way up through the sky. I'm just doing this as something to do while it dries. You could 
of course use a hairdryer <laughs> if you want to speed things along. But see this really begin to, to build that up. It's like a, you think of it like a fan. You don't want it to be, um, and I'll step back. So it's really, really hard to tell what's going on with sun rays when you're painting them close up. You need to stand back several feet in order to see at any reasonable you know, detail what's going on with your sun rays. You just can't see them close up for whatever reason because they're so subtle. Okay, then this one back here. Good, see they're just a fan. They fan out from this point. That's, that's about the only way to mess them up <laughs> if you get them where they're not fanning out from that point because then they just don't look real. So get them fanning out and you'll be fine. Well, now that my water area is dry, I can refine my reflection areas just a bit. I, of course, I got my round brush, which is amazing for, for blending. And I'm just gonna pull down this time. And, but remember we went across, so I'm still seeing these little swoopies in here. This is the same as if you were doing an oil painting and you went down and pulled across. It's just, this is easier in acrylic to do it in these two stages. So I did my across and now I'm doing my down and it gives you the same look. It looks like you pulled your reflections down, gave them one swipe and, and same difference. This is more controlled than, because see the acrylics are so slippery, they get away from you <laughs> if you're not careful. It's just easier to do it. You, you saw, I mean, you saw how wet it all was. and It's just easier. This is more controlled, more refined and easier. So I'm going kind of crazy over there. I'm not paying attention. I really want to be going straight down for the sake of this reflection, straight down at this point. There we go. And see, so I'm matching a valley, valley, peak, peak, Roughly, doesn't have to be perfect. And down here we'll continue just, again, matching the shapes, the heights more than anything, just match the heights. I'm just floating a little bit of yellow ochre right across this dry area. What that does is it just, it's a glaze and it, it helps it helps to bring in just a little bit more golden color here. That's what I did is mostly water. I just squirt some water there and then add just a, two drops of yellow ochre to my water. So it's really just water and a little tiny bit of paint. I don't even know if you can notice that or not. I don't want it very noticeable whatsoever, but I'm just, even over that limb there, just glazing a little of that yellow ochre color. I don't know, it just softens everything and pulls a lot of this together. See that? Very, very, very subtle. Warms it up just a little. Because this is acrylic, I can do that. You couldn't do that in oil because you've already painted it, it would be wet. So I'm taking full advantage of my acrylics today. All right, now set that brush to the side and I'm going to just, because my tree is dry, I'm giving a few minutes to dry, I'm going to just uh, sort of refine some of my edges just a little because I put it in fairly rough and now I can just refine some of my edges. You know what? Maybe let's change brushes. Let's, I was going to do that brush again, but let's do, let's do the little, little micro filbert brush. And with this, I'm going to just maybe even just a little more of my umber into my yellow ochre, just something a little, a little not quite so dark. And I'm going to place in a few little leaves and branches and so on right here on the edge, just the edge where you're going to notice it. And that'll be very interesting. Well, there you go. Well, that about wraps things up for today. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing this one. Don't forget to check out our website, DVDs and Brushline. Thanks for watching. Well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. Remember to subscribe if you're not already and click the like button that helps me out a lot. Stick around, watch a couple more videos and stay inspired. Mm -hmm.